Hello everyone, welcome to this session. My name is Shu Kun Song. I work for Fujitsu as a software engineer focusing on bare metal management. Today, I will talk about how to manage on-premise infrastructure in a Kubernetes way, which is using two OS open source uh, projects, Cluster API and Metacube IO. I will start from some background, uh, then talk about the details of, of the Cluster API and the Metacube dial. The word Metal3 is pronounced Metacube, and uh, also I will show you a demo about how to use them. At last, uh, I will introduce some uh, efforts we are making to enhance Metacube, which is expand its scope to also manage network devices. OK, let's start. Uh, although cloud is very popular when we consider to create something new or migrate our system, there are still lots of systems relying on on-premises environments for uh, some reasons, like security, for example. Those on-premises environments are still important, but the management is, uh, can be tedious. We need to reduce its operation cost through some automation. Uh, some automation. For example, if we can increase the number of machines without any manual operation, uh, just like using a public cloud, that will be very helpful. And uh, there should already have been a lot of solutions for this task, I believe. One of them I want to introduce today is using a Kubernetes way. This solution combines the three projects, Kubernetes, uh, Cluster API, and Metacube.io. OK, let's start from what the three projects are. Kubernetes is a production-grade container orchestration tool. It automates the deployment and management of containerized applications and pro uh, provides a declarative API. Users can use that API to declare, uh, declare the desired state of their applications and the Kubernetes will make sure that the actual state of the system is equal to the desired state at any time. And the applications deployed by Kubernetes have no downtime. Kubernetes has many other convenient features such as service discovery and load balancing, storage, orchestration, and uh, etc. It provides a very convenient way to manage containers. But how about the cluster itself? Uh, Manage lifecycle of clusters can be tedious. You need to consider scaling, upgrading, and even migrating. And it becomes more complicated when different infrastructure is used. What if we can manage clusters just like manage containers? Why not use Kubernetes to manage the cluster itself? User just need to declare the state of a cluster and then Kubernetes will handle everything for us. Such motivation brings us cluster API. So, cluster API is a Kubernetes community sub-project sub created by SIG Cluster Lifecycle. It extends Kubernetes and provides a declarative Kubernetes South APIs for uh, cluster management. With cluster API, the Kubernetes estate itself, such as cluster, can be treated as first-class Kubernetes objects. There are some new concepts in Cluster API. Two of them are Management Cluster and Workload Cluster. Management Cluster is a cluster, runs Cluster API components, and manages the life cycle of workload clusters. And Workload Cluster is a cluster that created on the user-specified infrastructure and runs user's applications. Having a management cluster running cluster API components users like an infrastructure, uh, infrastructure management team then can create and manage a workload cluster for each tenant by declaring the cluster's desired state in a YAML file and passing that file to the Kubernetes, just like deploy an application. And the cluster API can be used for different infrastructure, for example, ES provided by cloud vendor such as AWS, and so on. But it does not directly talk to the infrastructure. Instead, it uses the idea of provider to interact with the underlying infrastructure. The provider knows how to request resources, for example, network and machine, from the ES platform. We will talk about the details of provider later.
And today we are talking about on-premises environment, not like cloud. Such environment needs to be managed by owner itself. Although Cluster API can easily create and manage clusters for on-premise, we still need someone to manage the entire environment for us. Someone who can provision biometric servers and respond to the requests from Cluster API. Metacube IO could be this someone. The word um, it, it Metacube is an open source biometric provisioning tool, also using Kubernetes style API. Metacube can also can let us manage biometric servers in a Kubernetes way, and also it has implemented an infrastructure provider for cluster API, so that the workload clusters managed by cluster API can be created on biometric servers. Okay, with the help of Cluster API and Metacube IO, we can manage our on-premise biometal infrastructure infrastructure through Kubernetes, just like how we use Kubernetes to manage containerized applications. Next, I want to show you the details about how these two projects make all this cluster management possible. But before that, let me talk a little, a little bit more about Kubernetes itself, because there are some background knowledge we need to help us understand the Cluster API and Metacube IO. First, we are talking about managing Kubernetes cluster. But what is Kubernetes cluster? Well, a Kubernetes cluster consists of control plane and at least one worker node which runs containerized applications. The control plan consists of many, uh, mainly four components, Kube API Server, Kube Controller Manager, Kube Scheduler, and Etcd. Uh, the API Server exposes the Kubernetes API. Controller Manager runs controller processes. And uh, Scheduler watches pods and finds a node for those unscheduled pods to run on. And, uh, etcd is a key value store, uh, storing all the cluster data. On the worker node, there are three components, kubelet, kube proxy, and the container runtime. Kubelet creates pods and makes sure that every container is healthy, and the kube proxy maintains network rules on the worker nodes. So, creating Kubernetes cluster is actually meaning running the control plan components somewhere and run, running Kubelet and Kube proxy on each worker node. All the worker nodes should have a container runtime. Next is about how Kubernetes works. Kubernetes keeps the system always at the desired state. To do that, we first need a way to describe the system. And that is done by using objects defined by Kubernetes. An object is a persistent entity in the Kubernetes system, represents some state of the cluster. For example, pod is an object representing the state of containers. Pod has all the information for running a container, like which image should be used or which configuration should be passed, etc. Almost every Kubernetes object includes two fields, spec and status, while spec is the desired state defined by user and status is the current state detected and updated by Kubernetes itself. With objects, we can describe the system. The next task is to make the desired state happen. Kubernetes do this through controllers. A controller is a process watching at least one Kubernetes object and running an endless control loop called reconcile. In the reconciliation loop, a controller tries to move the current state of the Kubernetes object closer to its desired state. Uh, the object and this reconciliation loop is fundamental to how uh, to almost uh, to how almost everything works in Kubernetes. And the last thing before we move to the detail of Cluster API and Metacube is about a way to extend the Kubernetes API. Although there are already a lot of kinds of objects and related controllers in Kubernetes, which enable Kubernetes to manage everything related with container, we may still expect Kubernetes to do more 
we may need to expect its, uh, extend its API to add a new kind of objects to Kubernetes and reconcile it. Kubernetes also provides an easy way to do this extension, which is CRD, custom resource definition. As we can tell from its name, CRD is a definition, defines a new resource created by user. And here, a resource is an API endpoint that stores a collection of objects of a certain kind. For example, the ports resource contains a collection of port objects. So a custom resource then is an API endpoint that stores objects of a new user Defined of a new user defined kind, which means an extension of the Kubernetes API. And CRD is one way to add the custom resources. With creating a CRD, Kubernetes can understand those new kind objects, and users just need to create their own controller to handle the related reconcile loop. Then Kubernetes can be used to manage that new objects. The CRD itself is also a Kubernetes object. You can list them by kube control or get CRD to see how many new uh, APIs have been added to that cluster. And as you have probably submissed, submissed <coughs> cluster API and uh, MetaCube dial use CRD to extend Kubernetes to understand API kinds related to cluster life cycles management and bare metal provisioning. Okay, now we know we have known how Kubernetes works and how it can be extended. Let's move to the next part. What cluster API and the MetaCube that you have done to implement the cluster life cycle management and bare metal provisioning. How cluster API works. As we talked before, Cluster API manages the lifecycle of Kubernetes cluster. It adds and relies on several new CRDs and related controllers. First comes to the cluster and the machine CRD. A cluster object represents a workload cluster that needs to be created and managed. It contains network configuration for this cluster, like pod CIDR, etc. And a, new, and a machine object represents an infrastructure uh, component hosting a Kubernetes node. That inf infrastructure component can be a virtual machine or bare metal server, for example. Each machine object has a reference to the cluster which this machine belongs to. And the machine objects are immutable. Once a machine is created, it cannot be updated except for some metadata and its status. If a machine to be updated needs to be updated, then a new machine should be created to replace, repl replace the current one, and uh, then the current one should be deleted. For this reason, there are some other CRDs um, defined to handle the changes to machines. <clears throat> for example, machine deployment object for handling update and the machine set object for handling scaling, just like just like for pod, there are, uh, exists uh, deployment and replica set in Kubernetes. With the help of machine and cluster object, we can describe the basic state of our cluster. The next is some controllers need to do some reconcile loops to create and manage the target cluster. The job, the job, this job should include at least requesting resources like machine and network from a specific infrastructure and booting a machine into a Kubernetes node. Because different uh, infrastructure usually use different API to interact with, and there are also multiple ways to bootstrap a machine into a Kubernetes node, it is obviously not appropriate, appropriate to let the machine controller and the cluster controller to handle all these tasks. So cluster API community chooses the idea of provider. There are three kinds of providers defined. Infrastructure provider, control plan provider, and bootstrap provider. The infrastructure provider we have talked before is responsible for requesting resources from the infrastructure. The bootstrap provider needs to uh, provide ways to a machine to make sure that the machine can become a Kubernetes node. 
and the control plan provider is used to create a control plan for the cluster. For each provider, Cluster API defines some new CRDs that the provider should provide and implement related controllers so that the Cluster API core components, the cluster and the machine object, just need to interact with those objects and do not need to worry about any details of provider-specific logic. The infrastructure cluster objects here contains the underlying network information for this cluster. Uh, those information the provider requested and got from the infra infrastructure. For example, the address of the Kubernetes API endpoint. The infrastructure machine object then has the necessary information for specifying a machine, like OS image, hardware spec, etc. And the control plan object represents the control plan for a cluster. The bootstrap config object contains the configuration uh, that needed by the bootstrap provider to boot a machine into a Kubernetes node. With all these providers and cluster API core components installed to create a workload, uh, workload cluster, users just need to first create a cluster object containing references to an infrastructure cluster object and the control plan object. Then create that infrastructure cluster object and that control plan object. Then <coughs> infrastructure provider will then request uh, network resources for this cluster and the control plan provider will create a related bootstrap config object and the infrastructure machine object to initialize the control plan for this cluster. After infrastructure machine object is created, the infrastructure uh, provider will request a machine from the underlying infrastructure and the bootstrap, bootstrap provider knows how to boot another machine into a Kubernetes node using the information described in the bootstrap config object. Then, user can create a machine object for this cluster containing references to an infrastructure machine object and the bootstrap config object. Like control plan, a new machine will be requested and booted into a Kubernetes worker node. While the infrastructure provider needs to be implemented by a vendor who provides that infra infrastructure, uh, the, for the rest two providers, the community has provided a simple implementation for each of them, KubeADM control plan provider and KubeADM bootstrap provider. Both of them are using KubeADM to make a machine become the Kubernetes node, and the actual CRDs are KubeADM control plan and KubeADM config. And as we have talked before, Metacube.io can act as an infrastructure provider. Actually, there are two main components in uh, Metacube.io. One is cluster API provider Metacubed. The other is Met uh, Biometal Operator. Cluster API provider Metacubed, which is usually abbreviated as CAPIM3, uh, is the cluster API infrastructure provider part. And the bare metal operator is used to manage and provision uh, the bare metal servers. Okay, now let's talk about how Metacube IO works. Uh, so until now we know CAPIM3 will respond to cluster API requests. Uh, it will request uh, machines for the cluster API machine objects all the control plan objects and the Bermato operator responds to those requests uh, provision a Bermato to make it suitable to host a Kubernetes node. So what has uh, Metacube.io done to make this Bermato management happen? Like cluster API, Metacube.io also uses Kubernetes CRD feature to extend its uh, the Kubernetes API. Last, uh, Captain 3 provides several CRDs. Some of them are Metacube cluster as, uh, as infrastructure cluster object and uh, Metacube machine as infrastructure machine as the cluster API required. And the Biometal operator provides a CRD called Biometal host for Biometal management.
A biometric host object represents one biometric server. It contains the information of that biometric, such as its BMC address, uh, hardware details, and so on. Mm, once a biometric host is created, the BMO uh, biometric operator will try to manage that server through BMC and inspect its hardware. After the inspection completed, the biometric, the BMH, which is biometric host, so BMH hardware details will be updated and its status will be changed to ready, uh, which means the biometric server is ready to be consumed. If a metal cube machine object is created, a cluster uh, CAPIM3 will then try to find a suitable biometric host from the current ready biometric hosts to host in this metal cube machine. And if CAPIM3 uh, finds such a biometric host successfully, it will then copy the info of the OS image and uh, use the data from the uh, metal cube machine to biometric host. Then, biometric operator will notice that such data has been added to this biometric host uh, object, which means that this biometric host has been consumed by someone. So, uh, biometric operator will start to provision the biometric server. Next is about provisioning. And actually, the biometric operator does not directly interact with biometric servers. Instead, it uses some other software as backends. And for now, it uses OpenStack Ironic project to do the provisioning work. There is an Ironic server running in the management cluster or anywhere else as long as the biometric operator can access. The Ironic will accept requests from a biometric operator like inspecting the biometric or provisioning the biometric. Uh, Ironic uses Pixie Boot to do all the things. It will access to the biometric and change the boot option to UEFI Pixie Boot power on the server through its BMC. Here the BMC means baseboard management controller. Uh, start and also start a RAM disk from one nick of the server and run an agent which is called Ironic Python agent on that RAM disk. The Ironic Python agent will inspect the hardware of the bare metal and send the results to the Ironic server side or, or uh, for provisioning, the Ironic Python agent will write uh, OS image and uh, config drive to bare metal server. This image shows the details of the provisioning workflow. It starts for, uh, with the bare metal operator registering node to Ironic, and then Ironic will send uh, a turn on bare metal server through BMC, and uh, bare metal server will <coughs> Through, go through DHC, DHCP query, uh, download the Ironic Python agent and the introspection and send uh, the introspection report to Ironic and uh, Ironic update biometric uh, status uh, to uh, biometric operator. And uh, when deploy node, when provisioning, the biometric operator will send a request, uh, deploy node request to Ironic, and then Ironic will tell uh, Ironic Python agent to download the image. Then Ironic Python agent running on the biometric server will download the image from the HTTP server and write it to disk. And uh, after that, it reports to Ironic that I'm ready, and Ironic will then update to biometric and also reboot, reboot the server. And after rebooting, uh, the server will <coughs> cloud init will <coughs> complete, and the server will join to all uh, join to the uh, Kubernetes node or uh, Kubernetes uh, init will run as a uh, initial uh, initialized uh, control plan. So how to, uh, how can uh, how to use uh, these two projects? Uh, to you, uh, when using cluster API and the metal cube IO to manage bare metal uh, environment, the total workflow could be first prepare bare metal environment, including connecting while and uh, while and uh, connect, uh, configuring network, 
Next, uh, create a management cluster. Make sure cluster API capm 3 be a biometal operator, ironic, are running correctly, and create the other necessary environment such as DHCP server, HTTP server, and also, also uh, prepare the related image files. And then create, it, uh, create a biometal host inventory and create all the related resources we need to create a cluster such as cluster, metacube cluster, machine, and the metacube machine, and so on. After that, the provisioning will be started automatically. Captain 3 finds a suitable biometal host for each metacube machine, and the biometal operator will then start to provision the biometal server using the information described in biometal host. And the biometal host servers <coughs> reboot and then join the cluster. Next, I will show you a demo about how uh, about using cluster API and the metacube IO. In the demo, I will use two biometal servers to create a one master and one worker cluster. This image shows the network configuration uh, of the total environment. Uh, there are three networks existing. Management uh, network is used to access to all the BMC of the bare metals. And the provisioning network is for pixie boot and should be able to access to Ironic. And the bare metal network is used as the default network for the bare metal server after provisioning finished. The target Kubernetes clusters stays in this network. All the network can be accessible from the management cluster. Now, uh, and uh, now let's <coughs> start the demo. We have already created the management cluster. All the components we need are installed. And currently, no bare metal host exists. So let's create one for our control plan. Okay, the biometal host is created. Its state starts from registering and then inspecting. Yes, you can see here the state now is inspecting. And in this back, we set the BMC access info and the MAC address of the device used for Pixie Boot. After inspection, the BMC host will become ready. And because of the time limitation, we won't wait for that. We just skip to see what happened after the inspection finished. Okay, now the inspection finished, the BMH is in state available, which means it is ready for uh, to be consumed by some other components. And you can see here, all the hardware information uh, details are updated automatically. Some CPU information, vendor information, storage information, and so on. Okay, now we have a uh, BMH host ready for use. Next, we need to create our cluster and control plane object. The cluster object looks like this. It has cluster network configuration and a reference to a kubeadm control plan object and also a reference to a, a metacube cluster object. And the metacube cluster uh, has the information about control plan endpoint which is provided to our cluster. Now let's create the cluster and uh, the Metacube cluster objects. For Cube ADM control plan, I will create it later. And uh, I'm using the script provided by the Metacube community uh, for testing purpose. And uh, also for time limitation, uh, let's just uh, skip the cre creation part. Okay, the creation is completed. We have a cluster new created, and we can check its status. Now here you can see the phase is provisioned. That means we have an infrastructure cluster provided. So no matter uh, control plan exists or not, 
if there is an infrastructure cluster provided, then the cluster is in provision phase. <clears throat> and we can also check our Metacube cluster. Next is KubeADM control plane. Uh, this KubeADM control plane object is used for used to, used to create our control plane, and so that uh, this object looks like this. It first has a KubeADM config spec, which content is a template for generating KubeADM config objects. That KubeADM config object will then be used by a machine to let the machine uh, become into a Kubernetes, um, Kubernetes control plane. So you can see here in the template, there are a lot of files defined that those files will be passed to the machine during provisioning phase. And also a post, uh, some post Kubernetes commands and the pre Kubernetes commands also defined. And of course, the init configuration and the join configuration for KubeADM to, uh, to init and uh, or join uh, the cluster as a control plan. And finally, there is a machine template defined here. Uh, the machine template is used to generate a machine object. And you can see it has a reference to a infrastructure object, which uh, here is the uh, Metacube machine template. So that means the machine will have a pro, uh, infrastructure machine, which is Metacube machine. And that Metacube machine uh, will be generated by this Metacube machine template. And after the Metacube machine created automatically, uh, the Captain 3 will choose a ready uh, image and then set the BMH to uh, set image info to the BMH and uh, so uh, BMH operator then will start to provision the BMH host. The medical machine <coughs> template itself looks like this. It's quite simple, just has some data template and the image info. Now, uh, I, am, I, I just used the scripts also provided by the community, created the uh, QADM control plan object and the Metacube machine template. You can see here, the QADM is created and it belongs to cluster test one and uh, all the replicas ready and updated and available are not created yet. And this is the <coughs> status detail about the Kubernetes control plane object. It has some conditions to determine whether the control plane is ready or not, and also some other uh, like replicas uh, on the available replicas, the, state, uh, the status of the control plane. We can also see that the new machine uh, is created by the controller automatically and the machine is now in provision phase. That means we are currently provisioning the metal server. And also a new Kubernetes config object is created too. Uh, the machine just use the new created machine just use this Kubernetes config to uh, boot into a Kubernetes master node, Kubernetes master node, and also a MetaCube machine is created. You can see here in its data in the MetaCube machine status, it has some addresses assigned, uh, and those address will addresses will be set in the Bermuda server. So after provisioning finished, we can access into the server using these uh, addresses. And now the Bermuda host is in provisioning state. And we just need to waiting the provisioning state finished. So let's just skip this waiting time. Okay, now, 
uh, provision has finished and the permit host is in provision state and uh, during the waiting time I just added a new permit host which is node 2 uh, for uh, later uh, because I want to uh, later add a new worker into the cluster and the machine you can see here is in running phase and has a provided ID set in its spec and also the MetaCube related MetaCube machine also have uh, same uh, provider ID with the machine and also it's in uh, ready state and we can access into the Bermuda server to see what happened with our cluster now we can see the class the workload cluster has been created and its status is not ready that means we have not installed a network add-on to the cluster Okay, we have a cluster. We have a workload cluster. Now we can add a worker into it. Also, I'm using the uh, script created by the community, and uh, this script cre uh, just created a uh, machine deployment object for us, and also the related uh, kubeadm config template object and uh, metacube machine template object. The machine deployment were used uh, is used for to create and uh, manage the machine work machine for us, and uh, you can see the replix here is one. That means there will be only one machine created by this machine deployment, and the template means the machine generated by the machine template will use this such spec. So to <coughs> generate such machine, the machine deployment need to specify. Uh, Kubeadium config template and also uh, MetaCube machine template. So the Kubeadium machine template uh, has just defined the, the join configuration for worker to join as the uh, join the cluster cl uh, join the cluster. And the MetaCube machine template is just like a uh, control plan. There are some image info and the data template defined in, in it. And after provision and also after provisioning finished, we can check that machine deployment object now is in running phase and uh, it is belong belongs to a test one cluster and has replica one, ready ready is one, updated is one, and unavailable is zero. And of course, the machine is running and also has provider ID, the same provider ID with the MetroCube machine. And we can access to the master node to, uh, and also the Bermit host is in provisional state. And we can uh, access to the master node to see our node. That's all. Uh, the last part is about our efforts to enhance MetaCube. Until now, you may have noticed that the infra infrastructure provider should request resources from the infra infrastructure, including network resources, and uh, there should be someone to reply to that request. But currently, all the network configuration <coughs> is done manually. We are replying. Uh, we are replying to the request by ourselves. So that means uh, MetaCube lacks a way to manage the related network devices. So uh, we just are currently trying to add a new operator into MetaCube community. Uh, this new operator aims to manage the network devices which adjacent to a bare metal server. It should understand the network, uh, the operator should understand the network configuration set by user. Then find out which device the bare metal host is connected with and configure that device correctly so that we would not need to do the config network configuration manually, just write the needed configuration in some new Kubernetes objects and tell the MetaCube machine that it needed to apply such configuration. <coughs>
Then, after CAPIM3, choose the BMIT host, the network operator could help us to uh, do all the network configuration job, like put the Bermuda server into provisioning network before provisioning start, and put it into the target cluster network, and also put it out of the uh, provisioning network for isolation before it joins the target cluster. Here is a use case. So with such an operator, it is able to automatically do things like change the network infrastructure, uh, network structure of the entire environment. For example, let's say you have a Bermuda uh, environment with some clusters deployed, some clusters like one for production and one for testing. They stay in different VLANs and uh, sometimes the production cluster gets so heavy uh, workload that it needs to be scaled up. While, uh, well, as you have limited servers, the new node temporarily added into the production cluster may be some node from uh, other cluster. In that case, all the network configuration change can be done automatically by such a network operator. To implement such operator, we abstract three kinds of new CRDs, network device, device port, and network configuration. Each network device will represent a physical device, and a device port is one port on a specific device. So every device port will belong to a network device. Network device and its related device port should be created by the administrator of the actual device. And then network configuration is a configuration applied to uh, some uh, device port, and it will be created by user. The meta host will have uh, a reference to device ports to know which ports the Bermuda uh, is actually connected with. And when creating MetaCube machine, user can specify a network configuration for this MetaCube machine. The CAPIM3 will then find a suitable B a Bermuda host, which would be able to apply that configuration. Then, because Bermuda host knows which ports it is connected with, it is able to tell those device ports to apply that target network configuration by modifying the spec of the device port and the network operator will then detect such change and uh, start to configure the physical device through some backend. There are multiple types of network devices. For now, we are focusing on physical switch and uh, the actual CRDs are switch, switch port, and switch port configuration. The backend used is network runner, which uses Ansible to interact with the switch. This image shows more details inside the network operator related with the switch. Next, I will show you a demo about how the network operator works. In this demo, I will create a new Bermuda host and show you that uh, the new Bermuda host network version has been changed automatically. So this is the target Bermuda host I will create. In this port, it has a, a two um, <coughs> MAC address and the conversion and the switch port defined. That means uh, the Bermuda uh, MAC uh, NIC, which has this MAC address, which has this MAC address is now connected with the switch port, switch port, which is the switch port node one one, and also another um, uh, NIC is connected to a switch port node one zero, and uh, for node one one, uh, the uh, this port will be used to pick uh, as picks uh, for pixie boot, so. Uh, so when, after uh, creating the Bermuda host, the, its network configuration for this port will automatically be set into this configuration, which is switch port configuration pixie. Uh, 
and we have already created the, the switch port, two switch ports, uh, two and switch port configuration here. So the switch port configuration pixie it looks like this. Uh, that means it has a spec which is untagged VLAN 16, which means the uh, pixie network will use VLAN 16. And uh, and we have also created the switch port object. Now they are all in idle because we are not uh, using them currently. And for node 1.1, one, one, you can see the spec is empty here, which means there is no configuration applied to this uh, switch port. And also, we can we uh, as we also have created the switch object itself, and in the switch object spec. It defines that uh, it has two ports defined in the ports uh, field. The switch port, which means the switch port node one zero, is actually uh, the uh, physical port, which name is zero slash thirty four in the physical switch, and uh, node one one is actually the port zero uh, forty six port. So next, I want to show you that the current state of the network of, uh, of the physical switch. So here, current configuration, the interface is 60, 40, uh, 46, and it is shut down. And uh, there, you can see there's no VLAN setting in here. So now we have we have uh, created the BMH. That means the BMH needed to be inspected inspected by uh, Ironic. So the we needed to put the target uh, port into the VLAN 16. You can see here BMH is started registering. And the configuration where then automatically the switch network configuration applied to the switch port node 11 will automatically set into the uh, pixie configuration. Yes, here. You can see the configuration now has been set to switch port configuration pixie and the status is on VLAN 16. And with a little time, you can see the current, the, uh, <clears throat> the actual state in the switch is now switch port access. And yes, switch port access VLAN 16. That's all about the network reader works. Yes, our BMH is now inspecting. The last thing is about some community resources. And that's all. Thank you.